it's still dark outside. But I know that great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. When they sent word to Jesus that Lazarus was sick, they expected an immediate response. Not an ordinary response. Not a, we'll get to you later, or when the, the crusade comes to your town, I'll show up. But because of the closeness of the relationship, they expected Jesus to respond. If we can just get word. Do you know where Jesus is? Yes, he's over across town. Well, send words. How, how long? Is it? This is bad. We wouldn't even bother him. Excuse me. We wouldn't even bother him if it wasn't serious. And so they sent word, and Jesus gets the word. And instead of responding, he allows the messenger to get back to Mary and Martha. And they ask him, did you deliver the word? Yes. Well, where's Jesus? He decided to stay there. A little while longer and then when he finished his trip he said all right let's go and let's go wake Lazarus up and they said well if he's asleep he's doing well and he looks at his disciples and said he's dead now I want you to understand something that there is importance to revelation because revelation deals with the spirit and not with the cognitive. Revelation comes through relationship with Jesus by faith. You remember, don't you? Jesus took a poll, he took a survey, and said when he got to Caesarea Philippi, he said, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they had different, various views. Some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're Elias, some say you're John the Baptist. Really don't make sense. He said, But who do you say that I am? Now, I, I'm convinced that Peter had no idea of what he was about to say because that's just how the Holy Ghost works. Don't you know as, as loquacious as Peter was that if he had figured this out the night before, he would have been telling his disciples, you know, I know who Jesus is. You know, you can't hardly hold it when God gives you a little revelation. You, you call in friends and you share. So I know Peter didn't have any idea, but when Jesus asked, who do you say? God blasted into his spirit. The Bible says that God may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That word spirit is pneuma. And one of the, one of the definitions of pneuma is blast. And God will blast into your spirit a revelation. Peter did not equivocate. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you but my father which is in heaven and I want you to understand that revelation is dispensational in other words God gives revelation based on dispensation in other words is a as you need to know basis Lord have mercy God doesn't tell you everything that you're going to go through God is so wise that he'll give you a promise but won't give you all the problems you have to face once you get to the problem I, I don't hear nobody when I look at this text again. Jesus is on his way into town. And somebody says, Martha, the master is coming. 
He hasn't even arrived, but he's coming. I want you to understand that there is a anticipated element of faith. If you have a quality faith, faith anticipates that something is going to happen. I'm surrounded by folk that are crying. My brother is dead and in the tomb. But I'm going to run to Jesus. Lord, have mercy because I hear he's coming. He late, he's late, he late, but he coming. I don't hear nobody talking to me. See, the problem with uh, modern theology is that it teaches faith inappropriately. It says things like, if you have faith, then you won't have to go through anything. Or if you would have had faith, then this would not have happened. But clearly, that is not accurate according to scripture. Faith happens with or without. I wish I had some help here. Whether you see it or not, faith, when you have faith, faith in God, then all you desire is the presence of God. And when you hear Jesus is coming, you leave folk that are stuck in mourning and in crying and you find yourself running to Jesus. I know there's somebody here that needs to run to Jesus. I need somebody to put those hands together and give God praise. I'm closing Martha runs to Jesus. Hurt, but I'm running to Jesus. I don't understand why you didn't show up when I first called you. But uh, there's something on the inside that uh, not yet that makes me want to run to you even when I don't understand you. I wish I had some folk that had relationship. Hallelujah. I know, I know the problem, the problem is that we as believers think that we have to know everything and we have to cognitively have the ability to decipher and understand it and explain it. But faith says, I put it out there. I asked God for something and what I asked him for didn't seem to come to pass, but he's coming. And I got to run to him. Oh, I want you to understand. I try to tell people I didn't get saved to get a car. I didn't get saved to get a Grammy. I didn't get saved to be a celebrity. Ah, that's all well and good. But if you lose everything and you hear that Jesus is coming, your faith ought to pull you in the direction of the God that you love. Would you give God praise? And I'm going to try to stop here. Now, now, Martha always receives a bad deal. Every time I've heard this text preached, we always beat up on Martha because Martha was encumbered about with many things and Mary desired the better part but I want you to understand wherever you working with God if you working in the kitchen it takes faith I don't hear nobody talking to me uh, and you, you might not think you're significant but look at somebody and tell them I'm significant I'm significant and I'm going to show you how significant Martha was. Martha runs to Jesus. And when she finally gets to Jesus, she says, Jesus, if you had been here, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
How many here tonight believe that if Jesus had been there, that he could have prevented Lazarus from ever dying? How many believe that? Mm. The reason why that is significant is because all of us in here want a God that prevents things from happening. Mm. And when the thing that we want God to prevent happens, we get upset with God. We tell God we're not even coming to church anymore because we don't understand why you didn't stop it. You heard me. You heard me when I called you. You can help me now. Look at your name and say, I know that God heard me. And the, the understanding is that if he hears us, then we have the confidence that we're going to have whatever we asked of God. God, why? Why? Why didn't you stop it? If you would have been here, I wouldn't have to go through all that I've been through. I wouldn't have had to, to bury my brother. I would not have to have had this pain that I feel in my heart. God, I wish you just would have been here. And I know I called you early enough for you to make it here. And I, I don't understand why you allow me to feel the pain that I feel am I talking to anybody here and if you would have been here my brother would not have died but look at the faith it takes faith to tell God you have the ability to stop it. Lord, I'm glad that I don't serve a weak God. I'm glad that I don't serve an impotent God. I'm glad that I don't serve a God that does not have the ability to stop stuff. But I wish I had somebody here that believed that he has all power. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm serving a God that has all power. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he got all power. Which means he has the ability to stop stuff from happening. He has the ability to keep your loved ones near you. He ha Do I have anybody here that has ever experienced pain? God has the ability to stop from experiencing the pain but where would your faith be if God didn't let you walk through some stuff yes I want to give you a quality faith shake your neighbor's hand and say neighbor I need to know do you have a quality faith what is a quality faith a quality faith is a faith that runs to Jesus when you can't make heads or tails of what he's doing in your life when you can't figure out why a God that you love so much lets you experience so much pain but I heard the Bible say that the trying of your faith Lord have mercy is more precious than gold though it be tried in the fire do I have anybody here that recognize that once I come through that fire, there's a greater weight on my hallelujah. That's a great say yes, say yeah. So tell somebody Martha has faith because faith tells you if God would have wanted to he could have stopped this but then the very next statement that comes out of Martha's mouth was but I know you see faith I tell the little church where I pastor that faith is an expandable commodity that faith has to grow 
In other words, you should have more faith this year than you did last year, but not as much as next year. You ought to grow, grow in faith and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You ought to get bigger and bigger in faith. And one of the stages is that you move from the I believe stage to the I know stage. I just need to find out do I have anybody here that can testify through revelation? I know. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I know. Oh, Lord, tell somebody I know. It's still dark outside, but I know. My brother is still in the ground, but I know. I still have pain in my heart, but I know. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I know. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I know. I really do know. What do you know? Oh, oh, Lord, Lord, have mercy. I gotta close now. Martha stands in the midst of death and says, Jesus, I haven't just been hanging around you just because I thought you were popular. I know Mary got it. She was sitting at your feet. But oh, Lord, I heard you. I heard you. And it went down in my spirit. And oh, I know. I wish I had some I know folk. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I know. What do you know, Martha? I know that even now, tell your neighbor even now, whatever, whatever you ask God, God will do it for you. I need a church. I need the McClurkin family to know even now, tears streaming down your face, but even now, you got a bad report from the doctor, but even now, you're feeling pain everywhere, oh, even now, shake your neighbor's hand and say, I'm moving up in faith, because I believe God, even now, clap those hands, everybody. Give God praise. that situation and say even now even now Lord have mercy yes I was looking at the basketball game and those fellas in the striped shirts they can't play basketball but they don't have to play it all they have to do is judge it Lord have mercy and because they know the rules they understand the power that they have. Yes, the referee has the power to go over to the time clock and tell them put more time on the clock. I know, I know it looked like time ran out, but God has the ability to put more time. I wish I had a praying church. Oh, yes, God had the ability to give you more time 
And so when Martha set the whole situation up, you have to understand that the only thing that moves God is faith. And nobody was out there but Martha. And so Jesus tapped into Martha's quality faith. And she said, even now, even now, whatever you ask God, God will do it. Jesus says, do you believe that you'll see your brother again? And then the intellect kicked in. And she said, yeah, I know. Lord have mercy that I'll see him in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said, I know you thought that the resurrection was an event, but I, Lord have mercy. understand this but he asked her do you believe it and her answer was yes Lord oh Lord even now God want to know do you believe him that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or imagine if you believe it, open your mouth and give him a shout of praise. Everybody stand to your feet. in here is sick. But lay your hands on your neighbor and say, even now. Martha's confession because faith must be in your heart but it also has to be in your mouth because he never went into that dialogue with Mary Mary still had the attitude Martha went on in the house and her last words to Jesus was yes Lord yeah For all of the promises of God in Him are yes. So let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has. Ayata Baba. So let the church. Everybody say, come on. Everybody So let the church say.
response Amen. to whatever he said Amen. from the healing of your body Amen. to the raving of the dead Amen. in spite of what you're feeling Yes, Lord. Even now, even now, lift every heart. Even now, we believe you. Even give comfort. Yes, Kataba. Lift this family. Give them to trust you. Even now, touch this mother, Ishkata Baba. Let her continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of you. Even now, touch Pastor McClurkin and strengthen him. Even now, touch PFC. Even now, we give you praise and we thank you. For our faith causes us to run to you. And we do so in Jesus' name. Now I want you to just clap those hands and shout unto God with, with the voice of God. It's still dark outside. But I'm not. It's still dark outside, but I know.